Ladies and gentlemen, the President, please rise. Shastri National Award for Excellence in Public Administration, Academics, and Management. It's an honor to welcome the Honorable President of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, Sri Anil Shastri, Chairman, Board of Governors, Lal Bahadur Shastri Institute of Management, Delhi, members of jury, members of advisory board, Shastri family, invited dignitaries, faculty members, students, eminent media personalities, and other distinguished guests. I request Sri Anil Shastri, Chairman, Board of Governors, LBSIM, to deliver the welcome address. Please, sir. It gives me immense pleasure in welcoming all of you to this award ceremony, where in a few minutes from now, the Honorable President of India, Sri Panna Mukherjee, will give away the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award for Public Administration Academics and Management 2013 to Dr. Rajendra Badwe, Director of the Tata Memorial Center. It's my proud privilege to welcome Raspati Ji on this occasion, who has been kind enough to grace the award ceremony. I also welcome Dr. Rajendra Badwe and his wife, Mrs. Badwe. Dr. Badwe was chosen by the jury for this coveted award for his outstanding contribution in the field of medicine and oncology. Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award was instituted 14 years ago to perpetuate the memory of one of the greatest sons of India. Shastriji was primarily a man of peace. After he signed the Tuscan Declaration with the President of Pakistan, his last words were, we have to fight for peace with the same courage and determination as we fought against aggression. Our past awardees have been from the field of management, information technology, science, social work, public administration, medicine, and space science. The earlier recipient from the field of medicine was a cardiac specialist. And this year, the jury has rightly chosen another renowned name in the field of medicine with a specialization in oncology with particular focus on breast cancer. Dr. Rajan Badwe has performed approximately 20,000 breast surgeries in the last 20 years. The health scene today is significantly different with marked improvements in all the vital indicators of health program, but much remains to be done with a substantial unfulf unfulfilled agenda for poverty and poor health in our country. I wish to recall what Shastriji said on the 19th of July, 1965, at the Central Council of Health. Quote, unless conditions in rural areas are improved, there can be no progress. Doctors should realize that they have to function in a wider context. Doctors have to be imbibed with a higher sense of duty. They have to realize that it is their duty to relieve the suffering of the people. As we stand at the threshold of a new millennium, it is imperative to review the specific patterns and space of cancer. Its enormous burden 
and all our preparedness to meet the challenges in the developing countries. I wish to mention here that there have been only two Indians until now whose research paper has been printed in the famous journal Harvard Business Review. This speaks for itself that there is a dearth of research and publication in this country. With this, I would once again like to welcome the Honorable President and all distinguished guests present in this award ceremony. Thank you very much. Sri Lal Bahadur Shastri, a pragmatic and down-to-earth leader of the people of India, an exemplary statesman and able administrator with the moral and ethical attributes of a Mahatma and a person of impeccable integrity was a great soul dedicated to the welfare of the common man. He was deeply patriotic, having dedicated his life to the service of the nation. In the words of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Shastriji was a man of highest integrity, loyalty, devoted to idols, a man of conscience, a man of hard work. A firm believer in social responsibilities of business enterprises, he looked at the economic and social realities of Indian life with a clear vision, never allowing his judgment to be influenced by doctrinaire or ideological preconceptions. In the administrative sphere, he had original ideas and was an innovator with a resolve to give effect to new ideas. Shastriji's tireless dedication to the cause of improving welfare of the Indians is an inspiration to all those who look to the future with hope and confidence. Shastriji felt the need for a responsive and agile administration during his tenure as Prime Minister of India. The Constitution of Administrative Reforms Commission to streamline public administration was one among many steps he took to make administration quick and responsive. He simultaneously felt the need for developing high quality institution which could provide highly efficient administrators and managers for future. His vision was later translated into reality when the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration was set up in Masuri by the government of India. Later, it was translated into reality when the Lal Bahadur Shastri Educational Society set up the Lal Bahadur Shastri Institute of Management at Delhi in 1995. Lal Bahadur Shastri Institute of Management has instituted the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award for Excellence in Public Administration, Academics and Management. The award honors each year an Indian residing either in India or abroad who is an exceptionally outstanding and distinguished business leader, management practitioner, public administrator, educator or institution builder for his or her sustained individual contributions and achievements of high professional order and excellence. The honor carries a cash award of rupees 5 lakh plus a citation and a plaque. The awardee's name is inscribed on the roll of honor of LBSIM and he or she is designated as a Lal Bahadur Shastri Fellow. The citation. Dr. Rajendra Achyut Bhadve was born on May 18, 1956. He's a well-known surgical oncologist. Presently, he is the director of Tata Memorial Center and professor and head department of surgical oncology, Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai. He is the recipient of Padma Shri Award conferred on him by the President of India in the field of medicine in year 2013. Indian Nuclear Society Outstanding Award, UICC Reach to Recovery International Medal, CV Menon Gold Medal, International Society of Diseases of Esophagus Scholarships, to name a few. In recognition of his outstanding contribution in the field of cancer research, the 14th Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award for Excellence in Public Administration, Academics and Management for the year 2013 is being conferred on Dr. Rajendra Achyut Padve.
I invite the award recipient, Dr. R. A. Budway, for delivering the acceptance speech. Please, sir. I am honored to be the recipient of this year's Lal Bahadur Shastri Award for Excellence in Public Administration, Academics and Management in Cancer in India. At a time when cancer is becoming a major healthcare threat, our approach to tackle this menace takes greater importance than ever before. We are far better off than the West for the magnitude of cancer problem, and they can learn a few bits from us to reduce their incidence. Furthermore, almost 70-75% of our cancers are preventable by controlling tobacco, reducing infections, and controlling obesity. We have much to do to improve the outcomes of those who suffer from this disease. To improve this outcome, we need to deliver evidence-based treatment, create adequate infrastructure, and caring human resource over the coming decade. Some of these goals can be achieved by adopting few strategies that are already practiced in the West. This award, in my opinion, is an appreciation of running a facility for poor as well as rich under one roof. And I strongly believe that majority of the government hospitals will have this status in years to come. It is an appreciation of Bertrand Russell's principle of strict governance in non-shareable resources and appreciation of shareable outputs. It is also for offering cost-effective alternative to ill effects of market forces invading healthcare sector by following a simple dictum of health is not a business, but it needs to be run like one. I accept this award today with an abiding faith in Indian culture, healthcare system, and a realistic optimism in health, and in turn, the future of our country. I am grateful to my teachers, Dr. Mitra, Dr. Desai, Professor Michael Baum, Professor Bunker, who have shaped my thoughts profoundly. It would not have been possible for me to test and implement these ideas without cooperation of my colleagues at Tata Hospital and wholehearted support from successive chairmen of Department of Atomic Energy, Dr. Chidambaram, Dr. Kakotkar, Dr. Banerjee, and Dr. Sinha. Needless to say, a great support from my family too. I think beloved Shastriji would have known what I mean when I say that I accept this award in the spirit of a custodian of healing ways of Ashwani Kumar emerging out of the Samudra Manthan and hold it in trust for its true owners. For its true owners are the medical fraternity that works towards its own irrelevance and in whose eyes societal health is far more precious than the material gains. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. I request the Honorable President of India, Sri Pranav Mukherjee, to kindly deliver his address. Please, sir. It's indeed a privilege for me to be associated with this evening function where we are awarding a very distinguished scientists, medical professionals, and researchers on his accomplishment chosen by eminent jurists to receive the 14th Lal Bahadur Shastri Award for Excellence in Academic Management and administration for the year 2013. The award is associated with the name of a person who became the second Prime Minister of India after India's independence. The country had the privilege of having the stewardship of a great personality 
like Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. And we are fortunate to have him as the maker of New India after being freed from 190 years of colonial rule. Naturally, a question used to be debated in the minds of intellectuals, thinkers, and also in the political circle. After this giant, who can fill the vacuum? Therefore, the question which one American writer put it very beautifully, after Nehru who was a reality, not in the figment of imagination. But the country got an answer in a person of diminutive stature, short height, but with still resolution. Of course, he was not brought up in the atmosphere of Harrow and Cambridge, but by the environment of Kashi Vidyapit, but he was not wanting the requirement of the country at that critical stage. His 18 months stewardship as Prime Minister, immediately after the long 17 years of eventful years of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, made the country proud of. His simple slogan, Joy Jawan, Joy Kishan, and his remarkable success in the conflict of 1965, which ultimately cost his life, clearly demonstrated the twin objective of our nation. We have lost him untimely. The country could have got much more from him if he had longer life. Tomorrow, the grateful nation will pay its tribute on his birthday. Those who have the means to add value to our country's journey of progress must have the right intentions. They have an inner urge to do good for the society. They must have the motivation to enrich their professional experience by committing themselves to social